Namaste children. Welcome back again to this virtual class. Let us start this session with Ohm's law. In the last episode, I have told you that today we will see about Ohm's law. Before starting this, let us have a small recap on what we have learned in the previous episode. We have learned initially about the electric current. Electric current, it is the amount of or the quantity of charge that are flowing through a conductor in a unit area, right? So, based on this, the math mathematically electric current could be expressed as I is equal to Q by T, right? Here I is the symbol of current, Q is the symbol of charge and T is the symbol of time. On substituting the values, on substituting the SI units, we got I is equal to C by S. So, C is the coulomb which is the SI unit of charge and S is the second and it is the SI unit of time. And we found that the SI unit of current is ampere. So, 1 ampere can be defined as when in a conductor 1 coulomb of charge is flowing in a unit time that is 1 second we call it as 1 ampere of current. To measure this current, we have used a device called a meter. So, a meter is a device by which we can know the quantity of electric current that is flowing in a conductor. And for larger current, usually we use ampere, the SI unit. For smaller current, we use milli ampere and further smaller quantity of current, we use the SI unit micro ampere, right? Also, we have seen about the interconversion of units, right? How to convert from ampere to milli ampere, milli ampere to micro ampere like that we have seen, right? Moving further, we have seen about potential difference. Can you recall what is potential difference? The potential difference between two points in an electric circuit carrying some current has the work done to move a unit charge from one point of the conductor to other point. Mathematically, it can be represented as V is equal to W by Q. Here W is the work done and Q is the charge. By substituting the SI units, we get 1 joule by 1 Q, which will be 1 volt. We have seen SI unit of potential difference is 1 volt and 1 volt can be defined as it is the potential difference between two points of a current carrying conductor when 1 joule of work is done to move charge of one coulomb from one point of the conductor to another point of conductor. This is what we have seen about potential difference. So, from the mathematical expression what we have seen in the last episode, it is very much clear that volt that is potential difference is equal to W by Q. So, the unit of work done is joule and the charge we know that coulomb. So, one volt is equal to one joule by one coulomb. And an instrument is used to measure the amount of potential difference present in a circuit. We call it as voltmeter. So, based on the formula of current and the potential difference that is I is equal to Q by T and V is equal to W by Q, we have solved some numerical problems. Hope you understood all those things. At last, we have seen about the circuit diagram, right? So, circuit diagram is a pictorial representation of the circuit elements that are then there in an electric circuit. Those we have seen symbols. The symbols have been used to represent the components of this electric circuit, right? So, this pictorial representation of the electric circuit, we call it as circuit diagram. So, in today's session, we will be learning one of the most important concept under the chapter electricity that is Ohm's law. In the previous episode, we have much clear about the electric current and the potential difference, right? Is there any relationship between the potential difference and the electric current? Let us find out. From there, we learn what is Ohm's law. Here, look at the table. Here, serial number is given. The number of cells to be connected in an electric circuit is given and the current flowing in a conductor is given, potential difference, applied potential difference is given and finally, V by I is given, right? Let us fill this table before filling this. Dear students, now look at the screen here, an electric circuit. In this electric circuit, you can find potential difference and a meter to know the amount of current flowing in a circuit and old meter is attached across the potential difference, right? To know the potential difference that are there in an electric circuit. Right? Now, below this a table is furnished in which we can know, we can note down the potential difference and the electric current that are flowing in a circuit. Right? So, here you see 
columns are given first column is serial number second column is the number of cells to be connected in the circuit third one is the electric current flowing in the circuit so from the reading of the ammeter we will get it then next one is the potential difference from the voltmeter we will get it we will note all these readings by connecting different potential difference right and the final column is the v by i so upon getting the value of potential difference and the current we will get v by i in this circuit we have the potential difference as 6 volt initially we have added one cell when one cell is added a meter is connected and volt meter is connected right when the switch is closed then from the reading it shows that the current flowing in a conductor is 1 ampere so we can note down the values here now in the second case what i am going to do is here i am going to increase the potential difference by adding one more cell with equal potential difference so here two cells are there each cell contains 6 volt of potential difference so all together we will have 12 volt of potential difference so when we increase the potential difference from 6 to 12 then on the reading of ammeter you will find that it is 2 ampere so this also we will note it down similarly we are going to repeatedly continue this process till four number of cells so when we add four number of cells then the battery will have total number of potential difference here in this case will become 24 volt now on applying 24 volt the ammeter reading will be 4 ampere when we solve it for v by i in each case we will get 6 as the answer so here we have increased the number of cells when the number of cells are increased at each level you will find that current is also getting increased but the value of v by i remains constant so we can say that the v by i is equal to constant and this constant is known as resistance from this observation it is very much clear that when we increase the potential difference the value of current also gets increased when we increase the potential difference from 6 to 12 volt then the current has increased from 1 ampere to 2 ampere and then when we increase the potential difference from 12 volt to 18 volt then the current change from 2 ampere to 3 likewise if you see the relationship between the potential difference and the current both are changing equally that means on increasing potential difference current also increases right we see here that when potential difference is increased current is also increased the level of increase of applied potential difference with respect to current is changing equally so we can say that applied potential difference in an electric circuit is directly proportional to the current so here v is directly proportional to i and on the last column we see that v by i will give you the value 6 in all the cases which means the applied potential difference and the current the ratio between the applied potential difference and current is same throughout the electric circuit even if we change the potential difference so here the value of v by i we are getting 6 which is a constant in all the cases right so we can say that v is directly proportional to i so v is equal to i the constant this constant is known as resistance the si unit of resistance is ohm here 1 ohm can be defined as the resistance offered by the current carrying conductor when 1 volt of potential difference is applied across the conductor that produces 1 ampere of current on modifying this equation we will get i is equal to v by r which indicates that the current flowing in a conductor is inversely proportional to resistance which means if current is more then resistance will be less that means if the current is doubled then the resistance offered is half if the resistance is doubled then the current flowing conduct in a conductor will be halved so this way we can understand resistance now let us discuss what are the various factors on which the resistance of the conductor depends 
Let us now learn the various factors on which resistance of a conductor depends. To understand this, we will take one example of water flowing in a tube. In the earlier case also, we have taken water in a tank to understand the potential difference, right? So, water is considered as the best example to understand about the resistance. Now, if water is allowed to pass through the pipe, take an example here is a pipe here. 10 ml of water is poured on the left hand side and the same will be collected on the right hand side. If you measure both the water from the collected water and the initially added water, then you will find that some amount of water will be lost. Where does the water go? Here when the water is added in the pipe during its flow, some amount of some quantity of water is attached to the walls of the pipe, right? So, this we take an example of resistance. So, every pipe holds some amount of water while flowing through it. Likewise, when electric current is flowing in a conductor, some amount of current will be retained by the conductor. This retained current is known as resistance or the ability of the material to retain the current is known as the resistance offered by the conductor. Right now, if the length of the pipe is increased, then it will hold, it will retain more water. Right. Likewise, if we increase the length of the conductor, then more current will be retained. Right. Suppose in a circuit, if we take a long wire and connect to a small battery or 1.5 volt or 3 volt, will the bulb glow? It will not glow. Why? Because while traveling, while when the charges move in a long wire, then by the time it reaches up to the end, most of the current will be absorbed or retained by the conductor. Thereby, the bulb get very less amount of current, right? So, that is why the bulb will not glow. So, this is how we can understand the relation between the resistance and the length of the conductor. So, you keep in mind that if the length of the conductor is increased, then the resistance will be more. So, we can say that R is directly proportional to length of the conductor. Now, the second factor on which resistance of a conductor depends is area of cross section. In case of a pipe, at the end you see circular shape, right? This is known as cross section. If the area of cross section is increased, then less amount of water will be retained. The same thing we can apply in a resistance also. If the area of cross section is increased, then the resistance will be decreased. So, we can say that R is inversely proportional to area of cross section. By combining equation 1 and 2, we will get R is directly proportional to length of the conductor divided by which means the inverse relation inversely proportional to area of cross section. Upon eliminating the proportionality with a constant, we will get R is equal to rho L by A. Here rho, it is not P, it is rho as it is written you see here rho L by A. Here the rho is electrical resistivity and on rearranging this expression, we will get rho is equal to R A by L. On substituting the SI units, finally we will get ohm meter. So, the SI unit of resistivity or electrical resistivity is ohm meter. Here, the resistivity is the characteristic property of a material. If resistivity is more, then the resistance offered by the conductor will be more. If the resistivity, the value of resistivity is less, then the resistance offered by the conductor will be less. So, on the basis of the value of resistivity, we can easily find out whether the resistance offered by the conductor is less or more. This will also help you in solving numerical problems. So, on the basis of this, let us do some numerical problems. Have a look at this question. Calculate the resistance of a conductor if current flows through it is 0.2 ampere, when the applied potential difference is 0.8 volt. So, in this question, the value of current is given, the value of potential difference is given. You have to find resistance. So, given quantities we write first. So, I is equal to 0.2 ampere. Then, potential difference is given. V is equal to 0.8 volt. 
we have to find resistance r we have to find right we know that v is equal to i r so this is what we have learned in ohm's law right so we need to find r we can rearrange this r is equal to v by i this also we have already learned now substitute the value of potential difference and i in this equation then we will get potential difference is 0.8 divided by current is 0.2 24 point point gets cancelled so we will get 4 ohm as our answer so 4 ohm is the resistance offered by the conductor if the current flowing through it 0.2 ampere on the applied potential difference of 0.8 volt so the only thing is if you know the formula of v is equal to ir that is ohm's law then you can solve such type of numerical problems very very easily let us see another numerical problem look at the second question children a cylinder of a material is 10 cm long and has a cross section of 2 cm square if its resistance along the length is 20 ohm what will its resistivity value be in number and units here you see resistivity is there we know that we have a formula right resistivity is equal to r a by l here what are the quantities given that we have to see what are the quantities here length of the conductor is material is given length is equal to 10 cm and area of cross section is given right here area of cross section is 2 cm square then what else is given resistance is given here resistance is equal to 20 ohm so by substituting the value of length area of cross section and resistance in this equation straight away we will get the answer so rho is equal to in place of r we will write 20 multiplied by in place of a we will write 2 divided by in place of l we will write 10 so 2 into 2 4 we will get rho is equal to that is resistivity is equal to 2 into 2 4 4 ohm centimeter in the earlier case we have seen that the unit of resistivity is ohm meter right if the length is given in meter then we have to write ohm meter if it is in centimeter then we have to write it in centimeter but the resistance will be in ohm only so rho is equal to 4 ohm centimeter you will find it very easy if you know the formula in one or two steps you can solve this numerical problem let us see another numerical problem look at this question aluminum wire has radius 0.25 mm and length 75 meter if the resistance of the wire is 10 ohm calculate the resistivity of iron now here things given will be written first now we write the quantities given here r is given r is equal to 0.25 mm right and length is given l is equal to 75 meter then r is given that is resistance is given here r is radius and here r is resistance resistance is 10 ohm we have to find the resistivity so resistivity we have to find now you see here length of the conductor is 75 meter whereas radius is in millimeter right so we have to convert this millimeter into meter we know that 1 meter is equal to 100 cm and each cm will have 10 mm so we can say that 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm which can also be written as 10 to the power 3 mm right so 1 mm will be 1 by 1000 mm or we can write it as 10 to the power minus 3 meter right so here 0.25 mm would be 0.25 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter so now we have corrected the units now we go for solving the numerical problem we know that rho is equal to r a by l here you see area of cross section is not given only radius is given we know that area of cross section that means it is a circular right so circular means area here radius is given from the radius we can find the area of the cross section here area of cross section is the area of circle we know that area of a circle is pi r square so we have given 
with radius so if you know the radius we can easily find the area of cross section that has to be found out first so here area of cross section will be pi r square here pi will be we will take the value of pi as 3.14 into radius is given as 0.25 sorry here 2 will not come 25 0.25 into 10 to the power minus 3 whole square we have to write so substitute these values the value of a in this equation straight away we will get r is given as 10 ohm so 10 into area of cross section is 3.14 into 0 0.25 into 10 to the power minus 3 whole square divided by length is given 75 meter Upon solving this, we will get 2.62 into 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter. So, I have skipped one or two steps. You can do this numerical part of your own. So, finally, we will get 2.62 into 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter. Let us do one more numerical problem to understand the resistance and resistivity in a better way. Look at the question, a copper wire has diameter of 0 0.5 millimeter and resistivity of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter. What will be the length of this wire to make its resistance 10 ohm? How much does its resistance change if the diameter is double? Let us see how it could be solved. Here diameter is given, D is equal to 0 0.5 millimeter, right? Then resistivity is given. Resistivity means rho is given as 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter. And resistance is given. R is given as 10 ohm. So in the first part it is asked what will be the length of this conductor that we have to find. We know that here we know that rho is equal to R A by L. On rearranging this equation we will get L is equal to R A by rho. In the question, the value of rho is given, r is given, but area of cross section is not given. But to find area of cross section, we have diameter. We can easily find area of cross section if we have either radius or diameter. From the diameter, we can find the radius, right? So, we know that r is equal to d by 2. And see here, the unit of diameter is in millimeter, whereas rho has the value meter. This has to be seen. So, here we have to convert this millimeter into meter. We know that 1 millimeter is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 meter. So, this would be 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter. So, this value we have. This is the value of diameter, but we have to find the radius. So, radius is 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 2 meter will be our radius. So, we will substitute here and L is equal to R we have 10 ohm multiplied by A. Area of cross section is pi R square, right? For pi we will take 3.14 into R square. R square is here 0 0.5. 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 2 whole square right so divided by here rho is we have the value of rho as 1.6 so 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter upon solving this equation finally we will get 122.6 meter here i have skipped one step so this step you can practice of your own final answer would be 122.6 meter. So, now we have got length of the conductor. Now, we have to find how much does its resistance change if the diameter is doubled. Now, previously the diameter is this. So, now we have to increase the diameter. D is equal to 2D. If the diameter is increased, then what will be the resistance? This we have to find. In general, we know that R is equal to rho L by A. If area of cross section is not given, then from the diameter also we can write it. So, this can be written as rho L divided by A is area. So, pi R square. So, here radius is not given. In our case, diameter is given. So, we can write it as pi D by 2 is the radius. So, radius square. Upon further solving, we will get 4 rho L divided by pi D square. 
from this it is very much clear that r is inversely proportional to diameter square right by knowing this let us understand let us substitute this in our case r1 is inversely proportional to 1 by d1 square here d1 is the r case initially what we have taken and r2 is inversely proportional to 1 by d2 square so we will get r1 divided by r2 is equal to r1 we have to write the inverse so d2 square divided by d1 square right so here d2 square is 2d square here 2d whole square divided by d1 square is simply we write it as d square right so on further solving this we will get 4d square divided by d square here d square d square gets cancelled so we will get r1 by r2 is equal to 4 here we need to find the value of r2 right so we have to write r2 is equal to we will get r1 by 4 and we have the value of r1 as 10 ohm so by substituting the value of r1 divided by 4 we will get 2.5 ohm so from this it is very much clear that if the diameter is increased which means if area of cross section is increased then the resistance will decrease this is what we have learned in the previous section so just we have doubled the diameter as a result of this we can see very clearly that the resistance get decreased so this way you can solve such type of numerical problems you should have the basic idea about the formula of resistance resistivity all this with that you can do such type of numerical problems easily still if you find difficulty in understanding this question then you can contact us accordingly your difficulty will be taken care of hope you understood the numerical problem likewise you can do some other numerical problems for practice now we see the third factor on which resistance of a conductor depends which is the nature of material we are familiar with the conductors for example aluminum copper wires we use for electrical wires wirings and all right material to material the resistance will change here no two material of same thickness will have same resistance and no two same materials with different thickness will have same resistance and also two materials at different temperature will have different resistance so we can say that the nature of the material is one of the factor by which resistance offered by the conductor depends upon so dear students that's all we have for today on the basis of today's learning i would like to give some easy home assignments which you can practice at home so here is your home assignment hope you will do all these home assignments very easily see you all on another day we will be learning about how resistance are connected in series and parallel one of the most important topic till then keep learning take good care of yourself 